God, we seek your spirit and blessing. We seek your presence. Speak to us. Move among us. We might hear your word this day. Amen. The Lion King is often thought of as the Disney Company's finest animated movie. It's at least in the top ten. It's full of stunning visuals that hold up more than 20 years later. It has music that's become iconic and a story that is sort of like and not quite like Hamlet. It's also a story about knowing your identity and belonging. I guess I should warn you now, there's going to be some mild spoilers for a movie that's 25 years old. So if you've not seen it and want to, I guess close your ears. But it is 25 plus years old, so... Near the end of the film, as Simba is attempting to keep his self-imposed exile, he's led by Rafiki the baboon to a pond, where he sees a reflection of himself that is first his father and it becomes him again. And he hears his father calling to him from beyond the grave, from the clouds, Remember who you are. You are my son and the one true king. Remember who you are. Because you see, identity and truly knowing who you are, the heart of this movie's story, the heart of its themes, Simba is being called upon to grow up and take his place in the circle of life, to accept the promises that were made for him when he was a child as his parents held him out and Rafiki put the liquid on his forehead. He is called by his father to remember who he is and then live like it. And then on the anniversary of his baptism to light a candle each and every year. Oh wait, that's us. But I hope you see the comparison I was going for here. Because The Lion King is a movie about baptism. I don't know if the creators meant it to be, but the comparisons are uncanny. The imagery, the themes. The Lion King is a film about baptism, friends. It reminds us, just like in baptism, that we're given an identity. And then as we grow up in confirmation of this congregation, we're called upon by the voice of our Heavenly Father to remember our identity, remember the promises made on our behalf, to remember who we are, just like Simba. And when we're ready to do that, well, we can do worse than look at this morning's Gospel passage, the baptism of Christ, as found in the Gospel of Matthew. In this passage, Jesus has given a sign, a remembrance of who he is. Listen to it one more time. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up out of the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And the voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Okay. Now I'm about to claim for us those words said to Jesus, but I want to acknowledge up front that can feel a little bit of a stretch, because Jesus is Jesus and we're not, and God's talking to Jesus, and I want to say he's talking to us too, and yes, I do. And here's why. I think the identity God gives us at baptism is very much the identity that is given to Jesus at his baptism. Here's what I mean. At baptism, we are reminded that we are children of God. Now, I don't mean to become children of God. As I said last week, we're already that. Everyone in this room and around the world are children of God. We're all already claimed by our Creator as an adopted child. But at baptism, we're reminded of that reality. At baptism, 
We're reminded of the God who cheers us on and embraces us, who says to us, you belong to me, I am your father and mother. At baptism, we're reminded of the one who claims us on the day of our birth as a part of God's family. At baptism, we're reminded of the God who says to us, you are my child, remember who you are. Something else. At baptism, we're reminded that we're not just God's child, but also the beloved. Now, that really could go with the you're my child. You are the beloved child of God. But I wanted to hold a separate point for it because I think it's worth remembering. We're not just claimed by God as a child, but we're claimed by a God who says to us that we are loved, just as we are. God calls us beloved. In a world where we often feel we don't measure up, where our movies and TV shows and advertisements try to make us feel inferior, and in this season where we're setting New Year's resolutions, talking about eating healthier or doing different things with our hair, God calls us beloved. God says we are enough just as we are. God says to us, I love you because you are my child and I made you. I love you. I love you. I love you. You are enough. We are enough. Now, we can, can and should strive to improve. Resolutions are a great thing. Please try to live them out. Eating healthy is a good idea. And if you want to change your hair, you go for it. I'm not going to change my hair because I don't do that very often. Just ask my wife. The last time I changed my hairstyle, and the time before that, it's pretty long. She's probably rolling her eyes in the nursery right now at that statement. But trust me. But you don't want to change your hair? Do you do you? But even before we strive for those things, even before we seek to love more, forgive quickly, to get angry less, things we should do, even before we work to live lives that reflect God's ways of justice and righteousness and shalom, the thing we should do, God says to us, I love you, and you are enough, just as you are. Remember, who you are. But there's the last thing. God says to Jesus, with you I am well pleased. And I think God says that to us too. I almost didn't put that because it again feels a little weird because, well, we sin, right? We mess up, right? We do things wrong. How does God say to us, with you I am well pleased? Well, Many of you are parents, and those that aren't parents probably have nieces and nephews or cousins or something. You know, when your kids mess up, you still love them, right? When your kids messed up, you still find moments which you are proud of them and pleased that they are there. Even if your child goes into the fridge and pulls things out without asking, or goes into the fridge and uses it itself as a step stool to get the cabinets above the fridge, I guess that's me. Um, you still love them, right? You still say to them, I am pleased you are here. And that's what God says to us when he says, with you I am well pleased. God's not saying that God likes sin and that God wants us to keep sinning. Again, we should do the work to get better. But God's saying to us, in the midst of all of that, I am still pleased because you are you, and you are enough. God says to us, you are my child, you are beloved. With you I am well pleased. Remember who you are. One more thing. God says that to Jesus. God says that to us, because that's our identity. But it's also the identity of those who have gone before. I didn't choose to put Memorial Sunday on the Baptism of Christ Sunday because of the themes. 
enmeshing well. Um, it was just logistics. But they do enmesh well. Because our identity as loved by God and beloved by God is true for us and true for all that we have lost. So hear this word of hope. In a few moments, we will light candles to remember those whom we are still grieving in this congregation. They too are children of God, beloved by their Creator, in whom God is pleased. That's their identity. That's, that's what baptism does. It reminds us of who we are. It connects us with each other and with the church around the world and even with those who are no longer with us. Because they and we are loved by God. They and we are enough. They and we are children of our Creator. Scriptures tell us that we belong to God in life and in death and in life beyond death. So as we light these candles, as we listen to the names being read and the chimes being told, as we recall those we lost, those we mourn, those we still miss, remember their and your identity. Friends, we are beloved children of God with whom God is well pleased. Remember who you are. Thanks be to God. Amen. And I always sing our song.